Ladies and gentlemen, my first guests tonight are a mother and a daughter who have offered 13 books, run for president, and advocated for children around the world. Their notebook is called The Book of Gutsy Women. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Secretary Hillary Rodham Clinton and Chelsea Clinton. <laughs> People who are big fans of the alternate timeline we're not living in. <laughs> um, so nice to have you both back here. Thank you. And I want to talk about your new book, uh, The Book of Gutsy Women. Right. Um, right. And we're going to do that in just a minute, I promise you. <laughs> but your fault for coming on Ukraine Week. Now, <laughs> We, we, we learned about the Trump-Ukraine call of mm -hmm. uh, the private server. Mm. Uh, is it time to, dare I say, lock him up? <laughs> lock him up. <laughs> what do you make of it? Well, um... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <think> sorry. <laughs> I created... Sorry. Stop it. I created a monster. Yeah, I right. created a monster. Yeah. Okay. I apologize. Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> So here we are, and we have started an impeachment inquiry, mm. which uh, will look at the evidence, mm -hmm. and I think that's exactly what should be done. Uh, I believe strongly that um, this particular incident has had such a huge impact because we've known for a long time that he was a corrupt businessman who cheated people, and we've known that he and his uh, campaign asked for aid from Russia. We've known that. But to see him in the office of the president, putting his own personal and political interests ahead of the national security of our country, just pierced through whatever confusion or denial people had. And at that point, uh, Speaker Pelosi rightly said, this is something we have to investigate, and that's what's going on. It seems, yeah, I, I, I was never a big uh, let's impeach him fan. I thought we should go to the ballot box. But when someone is clearly using the office right. that they're in to subvert the ballot box, right. to use by corrupt means influence from other countries to maintain their office, what good is the ballot box at that point? You have to hold them to account ahead of time. Well, and, and that's what the provision for impeachment really was intended to do, because if the founders had said, look, no matter how bad a president is, there'll be another election, we would have lived with that. But instead, they said, there may come a time when a president has subverted the Constitution, has abused power, has taken actions that put the nation at risk, and therefore we've got to have a remedy between elections, and that's what's being uh, looked at now. Um, now, the, some people may not know this, but back in February of 1974, you were one of the people who worked on the constitutional grounds for presidential impeachment. <laughs> yes, I did. For presidential impeachment, <laughs> uh, referring to President Nixon. As, as I like to say, you, you cannot make my life up, really. <laughs> No, but yeah, but can't make it. Trump up. keeps trying to. He does. He does. He, he 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 attributes all kinds of things. But you know, if I remember very well working on that, I was a very young lawyer, and coincidentally, one of the 
young Republican lawyers was Bill Weld, now running against uh, Donald Trump uh, on the Republican uh, ticket, and had been governor of Massachusetts. And we wrote that because we wanted to do the best we could to explain what is an impeachable offense? What does high crimes and misdemeanors mean, actually? And if you read it, and it's online and you can get a hold of it, there, there's a short two-page conclusion which lays out exactly what you were saying, Stephen, that you know, someone who is using the office to subvert the Constitution, to undermine the oath that he took to protect and defend the Constitution and the American people, that's what falls right into the definition of an impeachable offense. Um, Chelsea, when you see the present president of the United States uh, so obsessed with um, Secretary Clinton, your mother, um, <laughs> you must have an urge to um, protect your mother or defend your mother or uh, slap his mouth <laughs> when she says when he says her name, which of course would be get you arrested by the Secret Service, but like. <laughs> Why do you think that he's so obsessed with your mom? Well, I think some days he thinks about her even more than I do, which is <laughs> saying a lot because I, I think about her a lot. Um, and, you know, Stephen, I, I do um, kind of feel a need to protect her because I do worry about her uh, given uh, what we continue to see at his rallies, like the just rabid lock her up chance. Mm -hmm. um, years of, later. Three years, years later. later. Um, that it's still yeah. kind of his greatest hit um, is troubling to me. Um, and um, I'm so proud of my mom, you know, one of my original gutsy women, uh, and so proud of all that she's done. Um, <laughs> Yeah, hashtag gutsy women. Um, but ultimately, you know, first and foremost, she's my mom. And now she's Charlotte, Aiden, and Jasper's grandma. So I do feel the need to protect her. Uh, and yet, um, most of all, I just am so grateful that uh, she just continues to keep standing and standing for what she knows is right. Well. Right before we came out here, for the people at home, we're recording this in the early evening here on, on Monday. And right before we came out here to do the show, we found out it was revealed that Mike Pompeo, present Secretary of State, is the job that you used to have, who had said, like, oh, I don't know anything about this. I haven't read the whistleblower complaint. Turns out he was on the phone call with the Ukrainian president. How many times when you were Secretary of State did you have to say to Barack Obama, you can't extort foreign countries <laughs> to get dirt on your political enemies? I mean, do you, yeah. have you lost, did you lose count yeah. how many times you did that? Yeah, yeah that never happened. No. no, no. And, and you know what? do you what, think the Secretary of State's job is in that moment? To the advise the President? Well, the Secretary of State's job is to uh, make sure that uh, he knows, number one, what the president's going to say on those calls. I mean, these are usually very highly prepared calls. And, you know, State <laughs> Department and Defense Department, everybody will send over, you know, talking points. Sure. And, you know, we'll meet with the president and go over the talking points. And, and the president might say, well, you know, I'd rather emphasize this or what about that. Fair game, absolutely. And because you've got a president who doesn't listen to anybody and doesn't follow instructions whatsoever, um, he, I'm not sure they've even uh, given up on trying to give him uh, any sorts of preparation um, because they don't know what he's going to say. But what the whistleblower tells us, and remember, you know, all this talk that some of the, um, you know, Republican defenders of the president are saying about how this is hearsay, it was an admission from the White House. I mean, the transcript of the phone call was put out by the White House, and the whistleblower <laughs> has a depth of understanding that needs to be taken seriously about what happened. And the whistleblower says they're in the situation room, as I recall. They're doing the call. And as soon as Trump starts in on this, people are going, whoa, whoa, what, what happened? What did he say? And that's why they immediately tried to limit the... Uh, uh, the, the uh, extension of that uh, phone call to be shared with other people, why they put it on a highly classified 
uh, system that is used for the most important secrets like the Osama bin Laden raid, because even though there was nothing classified in it, the president's behavior was at least embarrassing, if not illegal and impeachable. So I think if the Secretary of State was uh, on the call, as is now being reported, he should have been one of the very first people to you know, just say, wait a minute, we got to clean this up. You can't let that stand. But we don't know what he did. What would, as Secretary of State, how would you feel if the president was sending Rudy Giuliani out to actually <laughs> handle foreign policy? Because that's, that's what he's, he says. He, he's saying, yeah. I'll hook you up with my private attorney. Yeah, that would be a big <laughs> problem. Okay. Yeah, you know, presidents often use, as do secretaries of state, you know, they, they might use uh, an envoy or a, a special advisor to deliver a message. But again, it is supposed to be carefully thought through. And from what we've seen on television, uh, carefully thinking through is not one of Rudy's strong points. Well, we have to take a little bit of a break, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Hillary and Chelsea Clinton and talk about the gutsy women who impress them now.